How are you doing? Good. A long time no see. Right. Right. Is there a different kind of feel with the team right now as, you know, two, three months ago? Uh, yeah. I would, I would say it's just a younger team, obviously, but there's more energy and more, there's more like, it's a want to to get better. Since they're younger guys, they're hungry to learn more. I'm just seeing on the field and it's correlating with the work outside of the field also. Um, the feeling I had when we were going through and winning the win the Big 12, going to the Sugar Bowl and just proving everybody wrong, it was a great feeling. And I just was sitting down thinking to myself, I trusted Coach Sark, and I understood that it was going to be a younger team. And with what I know, what I like, I bring brought to the team last year, I felt like I could bring a little bit more and also improve my game. So it was just a no-brainer for me, honestly. Is there a certain responsibility being an older guy trying to lead the next group of kids coming in? I mean, yeah, there's a responsibility, but it's more just like, for me, it's just to give them the knowledge that I know, really, and help them just to understand how we go about this. Because, like I said, I was on the team previously. I understood that the work, what the work took for us to get to that point. So it's really just laying out the blueprint and letting them understand that this is what it takes to do what we need to do to win. Damon, what's the biggest difference between playing middle and weak? Uh, I mean, whenever I go through my preparation, I would always just break down the defense holistically or just write it down from corner, boundary safety, free safety, basically top down. So I would just say, for me, it would just be the responsibilities that the mic and the will have. That would be the difference. But I understand it pretty well because as I was going through string practice previously, I would also try to stress myself and get reps at different spots so that I could prove, improve my versatility. How do you feel like, you know, you are now in terms of your confidence level at both middle and weak? I feel like I'm really, I'm a lot more confident. I understand more of the scheme and understand I could talk ball with the coaches and I feel like I'm just more confident in that aspect of my game, which is another reason why I came back to get better and learn more football because, you know, there's always a lot more you can learn. What's the kind of initial impressions of, of the live acting in front now? And the new guys that they brought in, Coach Sark reloaded the clip, like I said earlier. And Coach Nansen has been a real great new burst of energy, just teaching us new things. Like I said earlier, there's always so much more you can learn. And Coach Nansen has been stretching me on and off the field, getting me on the board, putting me in, let it allow me to learn the X's and O's, but also allowing me to tap more into my tank. He's telling me to burst to the ball, teach me more technique, and he's harping on the little things and the little details. What have you learned about Coach Nansen and his coaching style? Man, his coaching style, he's, a, he's just like me. He's a straight go. He has it brings a light burst of energy to it, and I like it. It's been really refreshing and good. And what, kind of, what kind of improvements have you seen Anthony go from last year to where he is? Uh, he, that's the thing about Ant. He's already a smart kid. I would say for him, he's getting more confident. And he's understanding holistically the defense, and he's just harping on more of the little techniques and just being harder on himself. I see him growing. Like he's maturing more. I love, love that about him. He's not a guy who's afraid to learn and think he has it all figured out. He's always willing to take tidbits, and he's smart. That's what a lot of people don't see because he's very quiet to himself. But he's been growing a lot. I love to see the growth. David, I've noticed a uh, little bit of Pilates in your hopper <laughs> field workout routine. How long have you been into Pilates, and how do you think that's out your football? Uh, I, st- <laughs> I need to say, I started Pilates last off season, and because I noticed that Joseph Osai, Christian Jones, and uh, what Charles and many of you, they went there. And I noticed that at first I saw a lot of women in there and I was like, okay, I could do this now. I was raw. I was my first workout I almost threw up, but I've noticed a difference in my strength and my body control. It's allowed me to also stretch too. And it's just gotten me more athletic and stretched me. I feel like that has improved my game vastly. Have you done that with other teammates then brought them in the full? Oh, yes. We've, we started a whole new thing going as me, Baron, Maurice. We have a couple of younger guys like Justice also coming in with us as well. Maurice, talk about what they're seeing from him and, um, you know, where his game. Oh, man, Maurice, he got bigger. <laughs> like I told you before, Maurice already packs a punch, but he has the weight to weight behind him now. And he's also, like I said, Coach Nelson is stretching us all, allowing us to learn different fronts, different protections, and different coverages, and he's allowing us to just understand little football nit- tidbits. So I feel like Mo's been growing tremendously. He's already a hard hitter, but he's getting smarter with the game, and I just love to see his growth. He already had great footwork, but he's becoming a way better player, and I just love seeing it from him. Sorry to bring you up the Sugar Bowl, but how did y'all use that, you know, in the winter conditioning and now as, you know, you got close, but we show a little more ideal as motivation? I mean, you got to understand, we went from – Years where we barely even had 
Kirk. We're barely contending for a Big 12 to 12 yards away from winning, almost being winning a national championship in my hometown. Uh, that's just that simple fact there, just reiterating that fact, allowing, allowing the little younger guys to understand that we were literally this close, this close to being a part of history. That I don't know if you're a competitor, that would piss you off, piss me off. That's just me personally, but we always reiterate the fact that we're this close, this this close, and just allowing them to understand that if we put in the amount of right amount of work and we clean up the little details and just improve that, we could do that, and we could win the ninety. Kendrick Blackshark. Oh man, that's a he's a strong dude, but he's also a great person. I'm seeing a great person who's willing to come in and do the hard things and work like. I remember one time, and during winter conditioning, we will do our uh, our mat drills type days. I remember seeing him. He was a little tired, winded, and hurt, but he still thugged it out. And I told him he has my utmost respect because with most guys coming in, he fit right into the culture. He was open to learning new things, no matter how hard it was, no matter how hard the what we demanded, because our program is very demanding in the off season. But for a guy like that to come in and just take it all in and learn, I'm, he has my respect. From from your perspective. How the new defensive tact working? Oh, the, what stands out about those guys? The new DTs, they understand that they understand the job that they have to uphold, and they're not shying away from the fact they're pushing themselves, they're stretching themselves, they're demanding communication, they're being upfront, they're asking questions. I'm seeing a lot from Alfred and Vernon, and I, I'm really excited for them to see the year. Even Aaron Bryant, he's been showing up and just improving on their techniques. They've all been working hard, and even Tia, they've all been asking questions, going in. I watched Tia, looked at Tia's notes the other day, and I was just understanding, like, his notes almost look like mine, and I'm a linebacker. That's very detailed for a D-tackle. And just being in their meetings with Coach Baker, Coach Baker has been stressing the technique and the hard points and just been talking with him. We've been getting on the same page, and I feel like that's been helping them grow and helping the defense improve. Dave, you said you take a rough at both linebacker spots. Do you have a preference of which one you end up at? Which one do you see the most active? Uh, not really. Whatever one I, I feel like I said, I try to stretch myself to where I play both, to where I'm comfortable with both. So whatever the word we need, I'm there. Whatever the certain scheme demands that, hey, we need Mo here, we need you here, we need you here. It's just pick up, no drop off. Just pick up and go. I just feel like the, the opportunity. As long as I have the opportunity to go out there, I'm gonna try to show my best. So I'm not gonna have no excuses to not show my best. That's what I feel about. Dale, you said that the, the came back your six year to crew. What were what are the things that you're um, Honestly, I'd say my game, I need to improve on my pass coverage, my vocal leadership, because I already understand the defense. But Jalen, he called the defense, but I could also do it too. I feel like with him gone, I feel like I could fill that vocal role and just little things with my block destruction. I could be better on my block destruction. I am, I, I am my own worst critic, and I'm going to be honest. So I'll just say my block destruction, that point of attack, and my pass coverage and be more – be more – I, what's the word I want to use? Be more impactful with that. I want more picks. You feel me? I can get sacks, but I want to pick two. I don't want to just watch Jalen get one. I feel like that's how I can improve. And just off the field, be a more vocal leader and just allow, like, be someone that the younger guys can lean on to to help them. Because I already know what what it takes. I've been here for a while, so that's how I feel like I want to improve. David, talking about it, while we're getting the helmet radio this year, have you talked about who's going to be having the, the, the radio on the defensive side? Uh, no, I haven't, but I assume it's going to be Ant. But like I said earlier, he just needs to give me the call. We can just continue to communicate. It don't matter whoever gets it. But I feel like Ant's pretty comfortable with the communication part as well. He's been improving with that too. He makes the close calls and he makes all the defensive checks and all that. So I just feel like I, if I can improve on that, I can do it. Like I said, versatility is something I want to have in my back pocket. But I was a young guy and fits a surprise. Like in your room. The young And elsewhere, I would do that. Uh, Man, the young guy who could surprise. I feel like Darian Gillette has been coming along pretty well. And Ty Anthony has been showing very good bursts. But Leon Gillafau, he's a very disciplined kid, always out there afterwards. He's always working hard. And I'm, he, I'm literally watching it from the pickup from drill to on the field. Like when we're going scrimmaging, I'm seeing it. It's clicking for him. He's figuring it out. He's a very detailed person. I feel like those guys in our linebacking core are going to be make a pretty big splash. You see the running back groups, obviously, all the times they're coming at you. Talk about that group and some of the other guys that you see. What are you seeing from that, that side? I'm saying, man, Christian Clark and Frederick, man, those two, they're funny. They're always with each other, but they're always willing to work. And that's what I like about them. They're always head down, just understanding what it takes to win and just always asking me questions. And they're always out there. Like, if I go to the weight room now, I'm probably going to see one of them, either both of them together 
or that they're, they're talking just talking ball with each other. I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot from that. David, going back to the headsets, what kind of implication do you think that will have to change defenses play calling and like how uh, I feel like it'll make it like faster. If I, instead of me having to look to the side, I just I'm looking at the looking at the offense. Okay, I don't have to take my eyes off the offense. I'm seeing what they're giving me, understanding the body language of the linemen and the body language of the receivers, so I can have a tidbit and pick up on the plays. So I feel like it would just make the game a lot more faster and easier to pick up. Just like how if the offense Quinn doesn't have to look to the side to check it, he just closes his ears, listen. He's already seeing the safety, he's seeing what they're giving him, or see the disguise that they're trying to give. So I feel like it'll just make the game faster. And in the NFL, that's how they play anyway. So it'll just be preparation for the next level, in my opinion. I know that everybody goes, no, I will, but like TC last year, last year they go that pass in a battle where there are times you all got caught by surprise and didn't get the play call in because they were going so fast. Uh, what was the question? Were there times going against those super fast things like TCU and OU where y'all didn't get the play call in in time? Uh, yeah, there were times like that, but we already have an automatic check for that. So, like I said, it was just the communication part on our, on our end, like just being able to just adjust what the roll with the punches, you know, because that's how the game is nowadays. Offenses are trying to move fast. It's just speed, speed, speed. So we already had checks built in, but we just needed to be faster about it on our end. Who are some of the global leaders emerging on the events where all the guys are this lot? I say Baron Sorrell, he's been leading the charge with me as well. And Michael Tapp, he's been stepping up trying to lead the younger guys and just be an example for them at what real hard work like and what that thing looks like. Really you could did locker room last year and look got a lot of big chemistry. Got a lot of new guys, a lot of phase, a lot of trash we got guys, a lot of young people in there. How do we maintain what you had last year? this year honestly i just say is getting to actually know your teammates instead of just going in working and getting out that's the big thing because we've been the last last year's locker room we've been around each other for so long we sweat together we bled together we lost together but we got to understand each other outside of football and understand our motivations what made us tick where are you from what do you like just like the little things like that go a long way because if you're able to understand who you're dealing with you're able to understand okay how I come at them, how do I communicate to them, how do I let them know, and how do I get them information so that we can improve on this call, this play, or teach them or help them. That's how you got to move about it. You just got to get to know your teammates instead of just being just, just clicky, you know what I'm saying? That really helped. Frick, I like the crew. Look, he comes back to Austin. He knows some guys. Yeah. Did he that make his fit in the league because a little bit easier to come? Yeah, well, he's a good guy. I've had many conversations with him because he's an African dude. But we've always talked. But, yeah, situations like that with him coming back from Austin, he's just fit right into the culture, and he's bought in. He's been an amazing addition to the defense. What about Gillette and Presses? His athleticism. He's a very athletic dude. And just his ability to listen and take it in, he just needs a little bit more time to figure it out. But he is going to be a great dude. I can see it. He's figuring it out slowly with Coach Nelson. I'm just seeing him pick up the drill work and understand what it takes, and that's what I like about him. Nate, uh, Coach Monday said that SEC hasn't been mentioned at all behind the scenes in the locker room as motivation. Have have y'all talked about it in the defensive room or anything along the lines of that of moving into a new conference? No. I, we're not really too worried about the conference because we understand that we're going to get – we're already used to everyone giving us their best shots. So we already know we have a bullseye on our back, so – Let's not make it bigger than what it needs to be. Let's just understand that we need to put in the work to win, regardless of the t- opponent we face. So they're all going to get their best shot because the school we go to and what we bring and the brand that we carry on our chest. But we just need to bring what we need to bring, and that's hard work, and just understand that they're going to give us their best shot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I guess um, the main thing for me was just getting more experience. Um, you know, I had some people put together a pretty good chart on you know, obviously the more you play and the more experience you have, the better you end up playing and in the and succeeding in the in the NFL. And I just wanted to put myself in a better spot to be able to succeed at a at a high level once I, you know, hopefully get there. So, um just more experience and then you know, I feel like I've been been rushing my entire life, so just take a year, slow it down. Um and not not rush things. You know, skip my senior year, that went by fast. Um was at Ohio State for a semester or so that all went by fast also. So just take 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 my time throughout the whole process and, you know, enjoy being here and not <clears throat> just being present and not, not looking too far forward. Challenges you have to go through 
personal, like get to that hex space of just kind of taking your time, be patient with everything. Yeah, you know, it's hard because this is what you dream of. You know, since since I was a kid, I always wanted to play in the NFL and, um, you know, succeed at a high level in the NFL. And, you know, to, to get to to get to that to, to that point, I, you know, obviously I think it was just better for me to, to just stay another year uh, and then just enjoy it. In that final game, how much did that didn't factor in? Also, just provide motivation. It definitely um, provides motivation um, for for not just me, but all these guys and these coaches also. Um, you know, it was it was a great year. Um, you know, probably my favorite team I've ever been a part of. Just the relationships that we had, whether that had been <clears throat> me with receivers, and it's cool because it carried on over to the defense. You know, I had awesome relationships with you know even the D linemen and the linebackers and the safeties and you know you, you know you're gonna have a good team whenever you you can just go hang out with anybody so Quinn say some people made a chart to help you make that decision can you give some insight into who was helping you make that decision whether it be your parents coaches, Stark, whoever? yeah I think I just have a really good corner of, of people around me that you know help me um you know make those decisions and <clears throat> ultimately it's it's always up to me that, but they provide information and um, you know, I, I trust and have good faith in, in what they believe in. So obviously I'm going to, you know, take their opinions. And, uh, yeah, that starts with uh, my parents and then, you know, other outside people that also help me with make those those big those bigger decisions. When did you know you were coming back? When did I know? <clears throat> um, honestly, I didn't make the decision until probably – a couple, like a week or so after the Washington game, but I always kind of knew in the back of my head I was going to be back another year. When you had a, obviously a good rapport with Bad and I, we only one year. You have a bunch of new guys that are in here now. Uh, what's the key to developing a rapport with those guys and how's that worked out so far? Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> a lot of new faces in that room. And, you know, it was, it was, a, it was made my job a whole lot easier having, you know, Jay Witt. And Xavier in that room to help, kind of help those younger guys, but now we don't really have, you know, like an old head like Jay Wood in that room to to kind of help those guys figure it out. So, um, but no, it's good. It's good for me. It's good because um, you know I get to learn more about how to help those guys and you know just trying to get more comfortable being in that position. Especially the, uh, the uh, dash with the headset. How's that been? Was it the biggest thing to adapt to? I I love it. Um, I think it makes things a, a little bit easier for me. Um, you know, obviously we're still signaling and, but I still have Sark telling me the plays, um, in the helmet and, you know, it's the first day was a little shaky just cause it, you know, I was getting used to it, but I think it's going to be really helpful for me. And, and when you're looking ahead in the NFL, I mean, that's part of the NFL game, right? hundred percent that, 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 that it's only going to help. It's only going to help. You mentioned, you know, getting more game opportunities, you miss games past few years. What have you done maybe over the winter to, to maybe increase your durability and ability to get through the entire season. Yeah, um, you know, obviously you got to put more weight on. I think I was just a few pounds too light last year. <clears throat> Probably played every game around 200. Um, so around 205, trying to get up to 210 right now. Um, I think that just just gaining good – and it's got to be good weight. It can't be, you know, that that mullet weight I had when I was back. I was like <laughs> 220. Wait, I know, the, I know you know the uh, – you had at nine, uh, uh, Xavier, et cetera, yes, for last year. What have you seen so far from the young group of receivers and the new colors, uh, their strengths? Oh, I think it's easy to tell that they all they all want to play and they all have the capability of, of playing here. Um, it's just a matter of fact of, you know, getting down Coach Stark's offense. And, you know, um, it's still early and, you know, those guys are still young, but I think they've – They've really st- are starting to grasp it. I mean, it's the second week of spring ball. Um, I'm just fired up to see whenever they're, you know, start start to be able to play fast and not have to think so much. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be pretty fun. What was the pro day experience like, and what was maybe some of the feedback you got? Uh, I mean, the pro day was cool, but it, it it wasn't about me. It was about those guys that are entering the draft. I was just I was just the arm out there. But it was it was a cool little pre-trial. You know, you had your mobile. You're out here, brun it. You know, you take off running. You're a little heavier now. Do you think you might run to last? Is that kind of a goal? Is that still part of your dream? Uh, I think it's when 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 the opportunity presents itself, I'm not going to shy away from it. Oh. 
we saw Jalen on pro day. And he was a, one of the leaders on this the really or team now. Oh, what did you learn from him? All of him was. Yeah, I mean, he was a, a great guy to be on the same team with. I, I definitely didn't want to be on the other side of the ball as him. But, you know, I learned, um, you know, kind of the work it takes because he's, he was always in the um, at the facility, you know, whether getting treatment or putting in extra work, and he's he's he he was a good friend of mine. Um, I'm super excited to see see where he goes and and how his career turns out. What is he doing really? about getting the Pilates? Is that something you? No, I haven't tried that quite yet. Um, I'll leave that to Bender for now, but maybe I'll sneak over there. We'll see. Richard said in, in Jante uh, this year as opposed to last year, what do you see? Yeah, I think he's a lot more comfortable inside the offense. Obviously, he's um, it's his second year in the offense, which makes things a whole lot easier for him. And, you know, it's cool to just be able to see how he's matured um, over the over the past year or so. Um, I think he's going to be um, real good for the offense and, and good for me too because um, we don't have a whole lot of guys who are in year two, and him being in year two helps me out. Who other than you is providing well, the leadership right now? I mean, on the offensive side of the ball, I mean, Jake's been here forever. So me and Jake, um, I mean, Jonte is kind of trying to get there, but he's still young, obviously. Um, and then we got Sed also in year two. So those are just a couple of guys. Kelvin Banks is there too. Hayden Connor. What an interesting one. What are some things you want to work on with your game going into the summer? Uh, I mean, right now, I'm really just trying to focus on um, defensive recognition, um, you know, anticipating what they can do so I can get through reads faster. It just makes my whole my job a whole lot easier. Just getting those receivers right also. What's kind of been that first impression or two on Trey Owens? Adding? Yeah, I mean, he's he's a good ad for us. Um, he's a funny guy. Good good to have in the room with, um, you know, we're all, we're all becoming – Good buddies with him, so he's he's good to have in the room. Global. Um, we saw him actually last year. We used to know those guys. Say it again, sir. Yeah, I think Isaiah comes from a similar offense, so um, it's kind of been an easy transition for him. Um, obviously, y'all know he's he's a very explosive explosive player, so he's able to, to get the ball, and who knows what's going to happen with it. And you know, kind of the same with Golden. Um, He's awesome in the return game, smooth routes. He got really soft hands, so I'm excited. Excited for both those guys. What about the DeAndre? Our sophomore more seen from. Yeah, I think DeAndre Moore is going to be a heck of a ball player here. I'm super excited to, to you know, work with him more. He's he's a good buddy of mine also. So, I know we're, we've 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 been working on the, on the chemistry and it's starting to click out there. So. I know we're both pretty excited about this year. The same guy who's trying to lead or has that element to him. Yeah, he's definitely got the capability to to take over that receiver room for sure. You'll be able to follow, obviously, to Tavian, but talking about kind of how kind of filling that role and Sark also compliment Juan Davis recently. What improvements have you made? Yeah, I think Gunner, he's he's also dropped some weight since um, his second year here. So, you know, his ability to, to run routes has improved a lot. Um, and obviously he's been here a while too, so he's also stepped up into a leadership role and um, just trying to bring all those young tight ends um, up. And, you know, he's been here forever, so he knows he knows what it, what the standard is, and he um, he's a good leader in that aspect of it. And Juan David, no. Juan's also been doing the same thing. He's he's a good player. He'll be good. So when you failed, what kind of growth in this scene from March? Yeah, I mean, year two, you always see a big jump. Um, in this offense with these quarterbacks because it's just you're just so much more comfortable and your confidence just goes through the roof so yeah Quinn you are the first year I mean your third year now so you look back two years ago to the day where have you grown the most where are you still <laughs> oh man uh, I've grown a whole lot in every aspect of quarterbacking um, you know my first year the wheels were turning pretty fast so it's it's finally last year slowed down and now I can can really play the quarterback position how it's supposed to be played this year, I feel like. Um, your command um, and how you're going to have to help get these receivers up to speed out of a thing, how much more comfortable are you? Slowly, you know, how he dies, 
you don't have a Jay Witt match. Was- For sure. I'm definitely have to step up in that role. And um, I'm super comfortable with it. Um, you know, a year or three for me, you know, everybody expects it from me. I expect it from myself. I uh, wouldn't rather be in any other position than, than what I'm in right now. So, yeah. Aslan, we're going to get to all of that? No. <laughs> Pass that. Pass that. On that note. Thank you. Thanks,